Hello and welcome to the in news series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja. In this segment today, we are going to discuss what are the challenges with respect to balancing the security of a country and the sustenance of healthy environment. Very importantly, from the perspective of Indo-China border, we have to study this entire segment. So stay along and we will be looking at these many things. It's a comprehensive program. I will try to make it as much brief as possible, but I will also try to provide you as much output as possible. Let us move on and look at this news piece. Arunachal villages fight to save sacred forest from BRO road project. Now the villagers, the families that is living near the villages, living in the villages of the border areas, they are saying that because of the road infrastructure project of the border roads organization, their heritage trees and sacred groves on which they are heavily dependent for livelihood, it's at stake. They are running from post to pillar, but nothing to actually acknowledge this problem has been undertaken. So let us move ahead and let's talk about Border Roads Organization. So Border Roads Organization is basically a road construction executive board. It was established in the year 1960 and beginning at the beginning it undertook two projects. Project Tusker, which was renamed Project Vartak in the east and Project Beacon in the west. Then it has up till after it started growing 13 more than 13 projects executive force it has garnered. Now some of you might think that because this is a border road organization then only border area of roads are developed. But no that's not true. It has earlier maintained roads in Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Nicobar Island as well as Uttaranchal and Chhattisgarh. There is a common misconception that it comes under the Ministry of Road Transport and Highway. But it is not. Until 2015, it was under the control of Ministry of Road Transport and Highway. But after that, since 2015, it is now under Ministry of Defence. Now, between 2017 to 2018 and 2021 to 2022, a total of 3595 kilometers of border roads were constructed by the BRO. It's a humongous amount. Now, moving ahead, let us talk about the issue. The issue has arisen in the Nyok Madong area that is south of Tawang. Okay. And in Nyok Madong, that is in West Kaming district, it is in actually Kaming district, the border roads organization is building roads and Nyok Madong is actually 8,389 feet above mean sea level. It is just 40 kilometers short of Sela. Sela, here lies Sela. Okay, so you can see 40 kilometers of difference is there. Now, it is also a home to Buddhist style war memorial or a 1.5 acre plot overlooking the site of battle on November 18, 1962. So as we see that because of the importance of this region, BRO is undertaking certain construction projects which is not sitting well. Now the villagers have said that more than 80% of the 36 square kilometer sacred forest has already been destroyed. An alternative strategic road to Sela is being built. That is why this region is seeing road construction. More than the heritage trees fell along the uh, more than the heritage trees fell along the alignment of 34 km road from Banga, Janga, Gompa to Naga. Heritage trees are very important because they have established themselves since a very long period of time and they are a source of many livelihood commodities. Earth, because of felling of trees, earth dumping is also occurring. Earth dumping has been done indiscriminately on valuable trees and medicinal plants, specifically at the lower levels. So this is the problem. Now this could lead to of course the disturbance of the ecology as well as flash floods could also occur because of the dumping of the material water could accumulate and flash floods could occur. Moving ahead now let's talk about the forest conservation rules of 2022 because here it is of utmost importance that we understand what are the rules that govern such moves. Now Currently, there has been a contention with respect to these rules because it allows the union government to permit the clearing of a forest before consulting its inhabitants. First, that. Secondly, the handover of the forest can be approved and the centre can collect payment for compensatory afforestation from the private developer. 
Now this is a government agency BRO, but here you we see that earlier what happened, the inhabitants were consulted before any such sort of activities could take place because forest dwellers are dependent upon the forests for their livelihood, but these rules have not done so. The government can give it a go before consulting the inhabitants, then what happens? They have to comply, the inhabitants will say okay. So first that, now this particular thing that says that whenever felling of trees will occur, compensatory afforestation funds will be taken. Suppose we take it from BRO as well, but the ecology of that place will be disturbed. Also, this contradicts the Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers Act or Forest Rights Act of 2006 because it is of utmost importance that we take care of the livelihoods of the tribes which are dependent on such forests and this is in contradiction of that. Moving ahead, now if we talk about the Western Arunachal Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh landscape, it is spread over an area of 7000 km in West Kamin and Tawang districts of Arunachal Pradesh and this village is an integral part of Kamin. A wide variety of rhododendron species, I hope I have a picture of that as well, rhododendron species is this, okay, and that is estimated at 32 species and 5 subspecies as well. So, huge number of ecology variation. Red panda and snow leopard are living in this region. Another problem is that because red panda and snow leopard, red panda is actually endangered in the IUCN red list and it is also a state, the state animal of Sikkim. It thrives in countries such as China, India, Myanmar, Bhutan and snow leopard is vulnerable in nature. So these two endangered and vulnerable species which are dependent on such forests will also get, you can say disturbed, of course they will be disturbed. Then 13 other threatened and vulnerable species of vertebrates are also living in this region, the landscape. The forest cover in Arunachal Pradesh is 81% of the state's area and more than 60% of the state's forests are under the rights and ownership of local indigenous community that is 31,826 square kilometers of state's forest. Okay, moving ahead now for western Arunachal Pradesh landscape, WWF World Wildlife Fund for Nature said that we are going to initiate an intervention to preserve this region and that was started in 1992 in which red panda and snow leopard conservation was also there, high altitude wetlands conservation was also there and strengthening community conserved areas that means conserving the area with the help of inhabitants and that is of utmost importance when we are talking about such regions. Community inhabitants are oh, forever they are taken into consideration because they know what are the needs of the forest, what are the challenges to the forest, the needs for improvement in the forest. All right, moving ahead, let's talk about the LAC. Now, LAC is a long 3488 kilometer line. Okay, and basically in the LAC, the regions such as western, middle and eastern areas are highly, uh, you can say a high ground for flash points between India and China. So, in western sector, we already know that China and India have started disengaging their troops since 2020. We were seeing China and India locking horns. And also, this region has been, Arunachal Pradesh region has been of immense importance to safeguard. Moving ahead, now China does not like the concept of LAC of India. China says it is just 2000 kilometers long, whereas India says that it is 3488 kilometers long. Now, Arunachal Pradesh is the 24th state of India. Before that, of course, it was a union territory. It was governed as a union territory, sharing its international borders with China, Myanmar and Bhutan. So, as we see, Arunachal Pradesh is like an arm, strategic arm over Assam, Meghalaya and henceforth every other uh, state in the northeast. Okay, it is, it became the 24th state of India on 20th February 18, I'm sorry, 1987. And it is known as the land of the rising sun. It is the largest geographical space among the states of the northeast geography. From the perspective of population, Assam is the largest. All right. Moving ahead, let us talk about the claims of China. Now, why is Arunachal Pradesh important? First of all, it has the claims from the Chinese side. China's claim initially extended only to Tawang district. Tawang is over here. Okay. And what happened? After that, since 
2000s, China has said that all this region is actually the entire Arunachal Pradesh is an extension of Tibet. So earlier it had a claim only on the Tawang district by saying that because of this, it is said according to them, the sixth Dalai Lama has been born over there and culturally it is a part of China. Hence, Tawang was claimed back. But because of the strategic significance of Arunachal Pradesh, it is strategically located at the confluence of the international borders of People's Republic of China, Myanmar and Bhutan. The entire Arunachal Pradesh region is that is why very important for both China and India. And of course, it is a part of India. Now, another thing is in order to put a lid on the Tibetan nationalism, Tibetan nationalism does not rise further. China wants to control the entire Arunachal Pradesh so that it can put its armies over there and take a check, keep a check on the nationalism. Now, control over Arunachal Pradesh is very essential from the perspective of India's defense because it plays a key role in defense. As we see, this is the entire Tawang tract, you can see. And the Tawang tract is important because it shares the borders with China, Tibet, the autonomous region of China. McMohan line is the actual line dividing Tibet and uh, that is autonomous part of China and the Tawang region but China does not accept the McMohan line. Now the problem is that through the Bamla in the 1962 war, in the 1962 war as we see through the Bamla only the Chinese got into Tawang and got a hold of the tract of a very huge chunk of Northeast India. So that is another problem. That is why Tawang is important. Tawang is a critical corridor between the Tibet region and Brahmaputra Valley. And Indian military officials have warned that if China gets a hold of this region, then Assam flood plains can also be into the hands of, you can say, China, if it gets so. But that is why we are strengthening our defense sector over here. Moving ahead. Now, the problem is Chinese garrison, the town of Nyingchi. Ningchi is lying over here at the border of Arunachal Pradesh and that is why it is important for India to have a presence over here. China's role at road and rail network here would enable it to deploy soldiers along the McMohan line very quickly. That is why it is India and China both are into an infrastructure race in this region. Moving ahead, now right now a major infrastructure drive is being undertaken in Arunachal Pradesh, specifically in Dibang Valley region that as we see Dibang, Upper Siang, West Siang and also here Tawang, this region, these states, these not states, sorry, districts are very important for India to safeguard. Now India is undertaking road, bridges, tunnels, habitat and storage facilities, aviation facilities and upgrade of communication and surveillance since the last few months. And that is specifically happening in the Upper Dibang Valley region to safeguard this region. Now, as we see for Indochina border road construction, the border roads organization has taken up 61 India, Indian China border roads in the border states. In Arunachal Pradesh, total border road length is 1725.46 km. That is almost 52% of the Indochina border. As you can see, Arunachal Pradesh, Ladakh, then we have Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and then we have Sikkim. Now, as we have to have a solution and this is not the first time that the government and the general citizens are straddled with the problem of balancing both the, uh, both the sides of the coin, the securities for India and the environmental standard. Now, the Chardham project was challenged in which security must trump green concerns, it was said by the Supreme Court. And it said that it is handling a predicament with respect to how to balance it. And if there is a call for security, should the Supreme Court intervene or not? Later it said balance between defense, environmental concerns is a better goal. Supreme Court says that balance need is needed between defense and environmental concerns because they should not be pitted against each other. Environmental is also a security issue specifically in the volatile climate wise volatile region of northeast india and article 21 as right to life has also the provision of right to environment as well healthy environment as well so that is also there and for tribes who are dependent on the livelihood through forest right to life is also over here so fundamental right comes into question 
Apart from that, community participation is a must. Now, one thing that we have to understand is the community that has been living over there, they know the nerves of the forest. They know everything about the forest. So, if their participation is encouraged, several infrastructure projects will, these kind of infrastructure projects will not get into hurdles in the long run. The consultation project must be longer, but at least it has been a well thought out process, which is a, an integral part of the democracy. Sustainability is a must. We cannot put one thing over the other. And as the Supreme Court has lately said, compensatory afforestation can undertake, uh, can take place if uh, I damage a forest in a region, I can plant trees in another region. Land banks are also there. But what about the ecology of that region? That ecology is disturbed and there is no compensation for that. Rehabilitation is a must. If it is of utmost importance and no other solution is there, then rehabilitation and livelihood securities of inhabitants should also be, uh, also be seen. Diplomatic solution. India and China, like they are... They have started engaging in the western sector of the LAC. They should start talking about of the eastern sector as well. Nothing can be gained from intrusion and salami slicing. Moving ahead, let us talk about the question for today. What are the challenges that a country faces when it comes to balancing security and environmental concerns? In 250 words, you have to write, okay? So that's it. Thank you so much for watching.